Well, a top PBOC official says China's economy is on a more stable footing and that consumption is picking up. Is it really? Let's talk more with Fraser Howie of New Wedge Financial joining Chris and me right here at Investor Insight. So, so the same uh, chorus line that you always well, hear from I, China? Well, I, I would guess all, maybe say all government officials would say that. Clearly, the economy <laughs> is not stable. Consumption is, uh, is relatively anemic. Um, and the Chinese economy continues to sort of stagger from pillar to post. Yeah, and Chris and I were just talking about this earlier, but it, you almost get a sense that even the PBOC's hands are tied and, and it, because it's just sort of a new dynamic that they're facing right well, now. Well, I think this is the problem. China has had sort of a couple of decades of, you could say, sort of easy growth mm. or easy wins. Everything's been in their favor. Their global economies have been in their favor. Uh, investments been moving to China. Money's been moving to China. It's all been... You know, relatively plain sailing. Now that model no longer works, and they're facing and they're realizing that the economy is actually in quite deep trouble. Um, and to some extent, it's a problem of their own making. This isn't the global mm. conditions are difficult. This is China has failed to reform and failed to change their economic model, failed to change their interest rate policy, their currency policy over the years when things were easy. But you know, they were doing it on their own terms. That was the argument, right? But uh, ultimately, it comes down to this. And what do they do? At least are they trying to address the situation? Don't well, they're, they're saying they're trying to address the situation. And uh, I think people did give them the benefit of the doubt or say, no, you've got to give China time. They're going to do things on their own terms. But clearly, they didn't do very well. And clearly, they have an economy that is still highly dependent on fixed investment, fixed asset investment. An economy, you know, in the past five years, China has become a debt story. Mm. And that seems incredible. I know. You know, and, you know, if you go back a decade and sort of 05, 06, when things were booming in China, and China was growth, 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 it can continue to grow for another 20, 30 years at 10%. Now we have China as a debt story. Mm. You know, people are talking about this is the same problem with debt overhangs in Europe or in the States or in Japan. I think this is meant to be the middle class economy. And ultimately, China's failed to reform. So we've got a situation at the moment where, um, you know, we've seen local developers being failed to be paid by local governments. And the local governments can now effectively go into the bond markets, which is probably a positive. Uh, we're having the private sector numbers, the Baltic Dry Index, um, the cement production, electrical demand production, um, Baccarat table numbers in Macau falling away very hard. So the private surveys are not particularly great. I mean, what's your view, or maybe even the in-house view, um, that we, we or what probability do we get that China can actually have this so-called hard landing, this below 6% growth that could really affect employment? I think from a political standpoint, I think it's highly unlikely the numbers will ever go below 6%. I think this, <laughs> is, the, this is the fundamental problem. As you say, you look at almost any private sector measure of the Chinese economy, or any private survey at least, and you see an economy that is in real trouble. You see inventories, well, things may be leaving fast, Factories, they're just piling up in warehouses. You've got, right. you know, so you've got these huge build-up in inventories. You've got this lower demand in almost any sector. And, and why yet, is it even cheaper oil helping? I mean, isn't that the, isn't that what everybody has been saying? Well, it, it does help them to some extent, but you ultimately have this model that's run its course. They've got far too much capacity. They've built up too much capacity. They've ultimately wasted too much money mm. building a lot of stuff they didn't necessarily need at that time. And so. And yet we have, so the micro looks dreadful on many levels, and yet there's still this fiction out there that somehow the macro is healthy. And frankly, this I think is the real problem in China, the disconnect between what the macro economy number says and what it's actually like to do business on the ground mm. in China. Does that explain why even some of the easing measures haven't really been uh, reflected as strongly as they normally did? I mean, the past years, couple of well, years, whenever they did a triple R cut, the markets would just go bonkers. I think part of the trouble there is, though, there, well, there, uh, uh, there, there's an appearance of easing. At the same time, though, there's often there's a lot of money leaving China as well. Mm. So the easing is only making up for the money that's leaving. Previously, everything was going the same way, and now it's in a much harder picture. And I think also, there's also this belief from a lot of those outside of China that somehow the government is in a position to control a lot of what goes on. China is such a large and complicated economy. The government doesn't have the ability to control a lot of what's going on. It ultimately cannot make bad projects good projects. Mm. And there is a knock-on and fall-on effect from that, whether it's in the property sector, whether it's in the industrial sector, people not being paid and increase in receivables. Ultimately, the government has no magic wand to solve that problem. Yeah, we are starting to see a, a stage where I think you know, economics have to make a, a big, bigger deal in Chinese stock markets. We had the reserve ratio cut, markets didn't respond. Maybe it's priced in, people were expecting it to happen. 
Um, but I think we're going to get to a point where the, the economics will make a much larger portion of what actually happens on the ground in the Shanghai Composite and the, uh, the, like the A50 and markets like that. Yeah, great point. A quick parting shot for you, of, uh, Fraser. That said, does this mean that since they're never going to admit, they're never going to let a number fall below 6%, uh, will there ever be a hard landing? A couple of uh, ratings agencies actually be comp one and never Well, I, I think that the hard landing, though, is ultimately ask businessmen on the ground. Mm. If businesses are closing, if factories aren't selling, you look at exporters. Is it operating. happening now? It's already happening. You already see property developers in dreadful straits. Um, is it a hard landing in the sense that this is a sort of impacting a sort of global financial crisis sort of catalyst? Is it that the, somehow the, a bank defaults? I certainly don't expect a hard landing in that sense. The government does control enough and there's still enough capital controls to avoid those extreme measures. But uh, clearly the business environment in China is very, very tough and it looks pretty hard if you're a small uh, you know, businessman in China. Mm, that probably explains the difficulties why the markets really haven't reluctant to any of the recent PBOCs. Very nice to talk to you. And thank, thank you, you very much, thank Fraser you. Howie there of New Wedge Financial.